There it is. There they are. Can you see them, folks? Because I know I can. Going to be popping up right there. And Connor, nobody's going to be able to hear you for a minute until I get that fixed. So let's get that fixed as well. Let's add that audio output capture. Bada bing, bada boom. Everybody should be able to hear Connor as well. Let me tab into the game so we get a little background noise happening. And Connor, I mean, just looking at this series early, it's a slow one to start things off. It looks like that's going to possibly change. Oh, even then, Vincent just not able to find that shotting That goal. was a close one. That was a close one. Ryan needed that. Oh, no, it's going to be Jimmy going in quick. You know, Jimmy McGuffin is Finton. That's important to know. Dearer B is Ryan, and Finton going to be able to bring it up and over straight into goal. Almost a minute off the clock, but hey, a point is a point after all. This is going to be a defensive game for Ryan. Ryan is going to have to be watching that goal. Ryan definitely has to watch the goal here because if you leave it wide open, and this is something we see even as far as 3v3s, when there's six people on the field, teams sometimes get a little bit overconfident, a little bit overzealous, and they do something like leave their goal wide open just like that. I don't think Finton even touched the ball there. I think that was unfortunately a bit of a learning curve. Ryan trying to get some action in and just not able to find that momentum. No, I'm sorry, it was Ryan that did not touch the ball, but Finton, is that, is that the Finton one touch, Connor? I, I, I believe so. I, I think it, I, I believe the Finton one touch does count even if it bounces off of the opponent. Uh, yeah, I, I'd count it, right? Finton only touches the ball once, it goes into goal, lives up to we its We might just see it again, not quite. Not quite, Now the Ryan. thing about 1v1s is you got a lot of ground to cover. Right. That you just, you don't have to worry about as much with a 3v3 or even a 2v2. You know, you're, tra you're traversing the entire field by yourself. Oh, oh, Ryan had, I mean, the, the, the fundamentals were there. He saw it, he used the boost, he tried to go in toward the goal, but Finton, unfortunately, just a little bit quicker. Already up 2-0, to zero, but 3.42 on the clock. We're 80 seconds into this matchup, and there's only two points on the board. So, Ryan, I, I mean, even a 10% understanding of this game could really clutch out. And even as a third point is added, there's still so much time left on the clock that it's not going to be enough to really scare Ryan out of this win. It's far from a domination. Right. It's great. I think even the players in the GLCL that are at the bottom of the totem pole have this sort of clutch factor that, that allows them to kind of adjust as need be. In adjustment, adjustment is what this game is all about at the end of the day, is coming through, finding those small opportunities. You know, what did I do poorly in game one? What did I learn about my opponent in game one that I can then weaponize against them in game two? I think there's a huge opportunity to do that. And if we're looking, you know, tearing these two apart of what they could be doing a little bit better, Ryan is, of course, using that boost. It feels like a lot of Ryan not utilizing boost as effectively or consistently as he wants. And just getting those giant boosts, getting the small pennies in the center of the field goes a really long way because this game, at its very fundamental core, is about speed. Absolutely. And one thing Ryan also seems to lack is aerial control. Right. Which is, uh, which is simple to learn, but very hard to master. Oh, without a doubt. I, I mean, I still I, I can never find myself kind of doing what these players are doing in terms of taking the ball into the air and then actually utilizing it to, to an aggressive extent. It always blows my mind. I, I can't even get the ball off the ground, let alone keep it up there. Now, one thing Finton likes to brag about a lot is uh, the fact that he doesn't seem to use ball cam a lot. Right. Uh, he, he, he actually prides himself in not using ball cam. That's really interesting because ball cam can definitely come in handy. I mean, even several collegiate players I know utilize ball cam in a way to just kind of keep an eye on it when they're going for something like boost or when they're going for a demolition. They want to make sure they know the location of the ball. Yeah, you never know. That could come back to bite fitting in the butt. And it's really interesting because when you, yeah, like you said, if Finton, you know, if there's a clear from Ryan and the ball goes hurtling downfield behind Finton, it's going to take him additional seconds to move his camera around and try to get back on that ball. But in reality, you know, if you had the ball cam on, your eyes are constantly locked on it. Now, 2.20 on the clock, Finton rocking a 6-0 for the time being. So this feels like it might be one of those games where somebody's really going to walk away with an aggressive win here. And, and Connor, I, I forget, are these best of threes or best of fives? So this first round is going to be best of three. Right. Okay. So this is a little bit scary. Best of fives. You know, if you lose game one, it's usually not the end of the world. It's not something to be super worried about. But when you lose game one in a best of three, there's only one more game. And if you lose that one, you don't even get the chance to recover. You're already out of here. Right. And it actually wasn't until last week, Charlie versus Jenna, that we saw uh, the best of three games go to a third game. 
Um, every game until that point uh, was a 2-0 sweep. And I, I hate to say it here, Connor, but knowing that this is Ryan's first game on the board, knowing this is Ryan's kind of first experience out here, this is realistically, I mean, looking at raw statistics, probably going to be a 2-0 sweep as well, especially as Fenton, for free, just kind of sinks that seven point on the board. We've got 104 seconds left on the clock, and Fenton is up seven points. That is just, I mean, I think far beyond what's going to be achievable from Ryan to turn game one around. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's looking like this first game is going to be a foregone conclusion, but you never know. Ryan could adjust in the second game, and anything's possible in Rocket League. Now, that was a clean Fenton one-touch right there. The Fenton one-touch. Yeah, that's an even better example of the Fenton one-touch. Knocks it up, bounces off the ground, and straight into the goal. He pointed corner pocket and found that opportunity to strike. Now, that was three seconds. That was a three-second goal, a kickoff goal. So we're now 100 seconds on the clock, almost exactly, now exactly. And there is another nine-point goal for wow. Fenton. That was brutal. Now, Fenton, in recent times, has been taking issue with Ryan, uh, believing him to be, uh, you know, somewhat of a fraud himself, you know? Um, five years ago when the GL GLCL started, Ryan was considered uh, one of the biggest faces oh, absolutely. of the GLCL. Um, one could even consider him to this day to be one of the biggest faces. He's the first ever Triple Crown champion. And I was gonna say. The only competitor to ever hold all three titles at the same time. Just, I mean, absolutely amazing. Like you said, the only one to hold all three belts at the same time. And unfortunately, just looks like Rocket League is not going to add to that caliber. But again, Connor, you mentioned the GLCL, its creation five years ago. Has Ryan lost a little bit of that gusto? Is this simply not his game? Or is he simply not able to commit as much time to gaming as he used to be? Very good point. Very good point. Now, now the, the fact of the matter is uh, we all are... Uh growing older, I suppose. But um, I suppose uh, it really depends on uh, the type of game that you specialize in. Very true. We've all got we've all got our custom game styles and Rocket League. I, I truly don't know of the GLCL competitors. Who is the best at Rocket League? That's truly not something I'm, I'm aware of for the time being. When you look at certain games, there's usually one of us that can really walk away kind of with an advantage. You know, Mario Super Sluggers, for example. I, I, I've won that every time we've played it to the point of where we don't play that anymore. So there's always kind of those games that start to fall to the wayside because one person can be a little bit too strong. And, and we've seen a couple of those, not just Super Sluggers. Absolutely. W WWE 2K, uh, Gang Beasts, like all these games, they've been discontinued because, you know, people like myself have uh, won all of them, and it's just clearly, you know, a foregone conclusion at that point. But, you know, I digress. Enough about me. <laughs> Enough about us, right? Let's talk more about the people still on the field. Fenton up 11-0. And I've got to say, we're seeing some signs of life from Ryan here. Now, like I mentioned... It looks a little bit more aggressive on Ryan. Exactly. Side. It's not as free for Fenton. Ryan's finding some ball control, getting a little bit physical with those connections. And it makes it that much harder for Fenton to take the ball into goal. Now, it's not going to stop him forever, right? Ryan is currently learning fundamentals of the game. And that's something mm -hmm. that you have to do to play the game, right? So, in reality, this game one gonna be a loss but if ryan starts to play a little bit more of kind of cat and mouse in game two starts utilizing his boost to get demolitions on finton 100 times over that could be a huge opportunity for ryan to at least lower the score of the game if not maybe find it oh my goodness ryan wow. gets the demolition too little too late that finton one touch coming into play again i was gonna say ryan seems to be developing an affinity for the demolitions uh, a player after my own heart. I have not played this game very much, but when I did, I would be getting... That was my goal, personally, was to get as many demolitions as possible. And it was fun. It was a great time. But, you know, it's not going to be the key to winning a game. But the crossbar gets in the way. Finton losing his own shot on an open goal there. Knocks the ball a little bit to the left. There's Ryan again with the demolition. He's in. realized this is it. A three-second respawn timer on Finton, but he's going to get in the way. Five seconds left. 13-0. And Finton really coming out strong there. Let's make it a 14-0 to seal the deal the buzzer beater wow. goal coming in from Finton wow. 14 no what a last second goal that was I have to agree and now we're gonna get that rewatch on it one more time that is gonna be Finton winning game one he's already up one game here Connor he needs one more to walk away victorious in this series 
and they they are jumping right back into the swing of things hopefully they join their respective teams if we're lucky they'll join the same color and it looks like they did folks a phenomenal turnaround it's so funny i personally associate ryan with the color blue so to i see think him, we all do yeah to see him on the orange team really would have thrown me for a loop but coming in quick it is a reset timer here connor zero zero five minutes on the clock what can ryan do in game two to win well, like we were saying, I think that if he can play a lot more aggressively, utilize his boost efficiently, uh, and block those goals, uh, even though he failed to do that right there, um, I think that he can definitely uh, stand a chance at uh, maybe not maybe not winning, but not getting uh, a not zero getting and seventeen. Smoked. Thirteen I think second anything goal. Anything that he can do to avoid a humiliation is uh, worthy of his time yeah I, I think like you said just putting even one point down could really be the momentum change that ryan needs it's not about winning it's about sending a message and if ryan can put one point on the board the message is he's walking away from this with a learning experience a great knock into center field but it's actually an even better setup for finton ryan has to boost over and he's going to be able to use a lot of boost there takes the ball up high off the field let's see what he can follow up on tries to get underneath it falls just a little bit short has to go for a pretty aggressive turnaround and finton there to snipe ball momentum away and put another point on the board exactly 45 seconds in Finton's already up two to zero you know Finton is actually the fastest competitor in GLCL history to achieve the triple crown that's uh, he true actually, he won all three titles in the span of only 84 days wow yeah and Connor who who happens to uh, have taken the longest to do that uh, you know if I'm not mistaken I do believe it is yourself I also believe it's me just wanted to hear you say it, it took me what like 500 something days or something it was not good but hey, it's better than nothing, you know. True, so I'm, I'm people, one of only, only five people. Five to do it. it. Only five people have done it. So. That's pretty cool. I mean, hey, those are those are some good odds. It's difficult because other than super sluggers, I don't think I've I, like we don't do that anymore. That's always how I got the uh, you know the intercontinental belt, but I just can't do that anymore. So I gotta I gotta get better at something else. Well, you, you know, you almost did it in uh, Mario Kart. Oh, it was devastating. Summer. It was devastating. Second place by a single. If I, Connor, if I didn't take the shortcut, if I didn't fall off the map on the very first map of Grand Finals, I wouldn't have tied Charlie. I would have won right then and there, but I went for the guts. I went for the glory. I fell off the map, and it, it cost me the bell. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Hindsight is twenty twenty. all in the past. But the present is 4-0. Fenton right now. I can tell you Ryan doesn't need a present. Ryan needs a miracle because right now he is down 4-0, a minute 12 off the clock and things are looking rough here because Ryan still hanging out at that big old goose egg. But I'll tell you what though, Ryan's series. been I'll tell you what though, Ryan's been denying those Fenton one touches pretty well. I agree. Ryan's definitely learning through kind of the the, uh, the learning curve, meeting the skill floor of getting through the uh, kickoff goals. So we're not seeing them as often, but still working on that kind of hard defense situation. I think it would behoove Ryan to maybe just sit in the goal a little bit more. Maybe kind of allow Finton to get overzealous, take the ball from him last moment, and then go through and find a great shot on and out of the situation. Clear it downfield into an open goal if Finton's too close to his own. I agree. You know, Finton, he's a bit of a showman. Exactly. He's a bit of a showman. He really uh, revels in uh, kind of showing off his skills. But, it, you know, perhaps against a more skilled competitor than Ryan, no offense, uh, it could perhaps really uh, screw him over in the future. Oh, 6-0 on the board. And this is where things kind of start to get a little bit rough. Even with three minutes on the clock, Ryan hasn't been able to find one goal in seven minutes. So we'd have to find six in three minutes. That would be quite the turnaround. And, you know, like you said, this is just kind of that, the uh, the skill diff kind of situation. Ryan has simply never played the game before. Finton, notably more familiar with it, goes up and over Ryan. Open field wow. into goal. 7-0 on the board. Just shows you the aerial mastership that Finton has in this game. Taking a look at that performance, and by golly, I mean, it's a good one. First game was, what, 14-0? to Looks like Finton's going to try to tie, if not kind of beat that record. He's seven points, three minutes on the board. He's got plenty of time to score seven more. Now, the biggest challenge for Ryan is going to be scoring one goal. I think that right. is going to be his end game goal. If he can score one goal, I think he's the real winner here tonight. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is his very first series. And if he can put one point on the board against a great player like Finton, a very experienced player like Finton, that's something to be proud of. 
look, there is no shame in losing to Fenton. I can say that oh, much. I can admit not. that much, especially in Rocket League. These are two legends right here. We are we are sitting in the presence of two legendary competitors in GL sale history right now. So we should be relishing it. We absolutely should, God. I think you bring up a great point. You know, even if the series itself isn't particularly close, we're really getting to see two kind of era behemoths go against one another. Ryan, in the very start of the GLCL, just dominant, seemingly unbeatable in a lot of things. And as Ryan kind of, you know, had to, had to go to college, fall to the wayside a little bit, Finton really came up and filled into those shoes a brand new beast to quarrel with game after game, time after time. And now as they clash against one another, it's just tough because this is simply Finton's world. But Ryan puts the point. Wow. Down, he's on the board. Two minutes and 17 seconds left. This is a huge opportunity. He needs to win. Okay, this is, it's hard to say, Connor, but he needs to score seven more times. He can tie things up here, but he got the point we wanted. He got what we needed. Is this the beginning of the end for Jimmy McGuffin? I think it's safe to say when it comes to Rocket League for Ryan, dreams do come true. You know what they always say, Connor, when it rains, it pours. Let's see if that's true in the dome covered stadium known as the Neon Fields. Let's see if Ryan can put that second point down. Two minutes left. I'd love to see him just get one more, but Finton never going to go down easily. Not going to pull any punches and going to put a ninth mm. point down. And you know that's got to eat up Finton inside. He's oh, not happy to see that. Undoubtedly. I mean, that is not the situation you want to walk away from and find yourself kind of getting scored on at all. Finton should have walked away from this. Insanely dominant, walking out with a 15-0, 17-0, but Ryan finding even one point and now finding ball control after kickoff. Wow. This is a huge opening. He's taking control. He's taking control, perhaps for the first time in the entire game. There's a really simple strategy that Finton keeps doing, and if Ryan utilized even a little bit of a jump into a boost, he could steal the ball away. Finton keeps going up and over Ryan, so if Ryan were to read this, bring his car, I don't know, two feet off the ground, he should be able to get in the way and kind of prevent those long field goals that Finton keeps finding. Absolutely. You know, I I should say, I should think I'm the first one to say pride. Another one! Is it possible? He does it! 100 seconds left, down by eight points. If Ryan was to find one goal per 10 seconds right now, it's absolutely doable to at least tie Finton. One goal per 10 seconds makes this a 12-10 situation. That's assuming Ryan gets 10 points in the span of Finton getting zero. So it, it's, it's, I mean, there's a world where it happens, one right? Is there, it there, the vegan one touch? I think he's taken his signature move. Oh my goodness. And then the, the vegan one touch, it just takes it right out from underneath Finton. Scores okay. on him twice with it. Okay, a little bit of a setback for Ryan. You know, we talked about it though. Ryan, the expectation is he, he realistically won't be able to win this, but scoring on Finton twice, that's about sending a message. That's sending that's a message defiant. to everyone else in this tournament. Finton is not untouchable. He is not unbeatable. There are cracks in that armor, and this is how Absolutely. to exploit them. Absolutely, and if Ryan can score two on Finton, think about what that says about people like Matty B. Exactly. Nick O, Anthony. I mean, there, there, there's so much to be said. Ryan has shown us that Jimmy McGuffin Finton is beatable. Ryan utilizing the jump boost I recommended just a minute ago, unfortunately, falls under the ball. I don't think he's going to make it in time to prevent that 12th point. But I mean, with 107 on the clock, Ryan two points up. He can't win this game, but he sent that message. And at the end of the day, that's what he wanted to do. Let's see who gets this face off. All right, That's a bit a of a clash one. here. Who's gonna get control? Okay, Ryan demonstrating oh! the growth in the aerial department. Bonking Finton in the face. Finton whiffs it. Oh, but he picks it right back up. Finds the goal, Ryan. Oh, had, had the right idea. Tried to get in front of the ball, but unfortunately just could not get there in time, even with the boost assistance. That's 13-2. Finton one point away from tying his goal. But with, I mean, we should basically subtract two, right? Because Ryan has those two points on the board. So it's not that same 14-0 energy. Right now we're looking at kind of an 11-2 situation. Pretty much. And if you subtract another 10 from that. Right, it's a 3-2. It's, it's basically 3-2. And then if you add one to Ryan, it's a 3-3. So we are we are essentially tied up right now. And if you add Kurt Angle to the mix, um, then it's like a 33 and one thirds percent chance of winning. That's absolutely crazy. I mean, that's just wild. Ryan's got a 33% chance of winning right now. Connor, that's almost 50. And if you run up 50, that's 100. Ryan basically won. I mean, we're all thinking it. 
Right, I mean, come on. Right, Ryan, I think, I think we can all agree here, guys. That's 33 goes to 50, 50 goes to 100, 100 goes to Ryan. So it's basically 102 to 14 right now. Finton just cannot keep up. 30 seconds left on the clock. Who's gonna get the last few goals here? Well, there's one of them. <laughs> 20, 21 seconds left on the clock. It's 102 to 15. Finton trying his best here. He's got 21 seconds left to try to clutch this out. Here we go. 20 seconds now on the clock once again. Anything's Jimmy McGuffin, possible. ball control. Anything's possible here, Connor. It is not over until it's over. It is not over until that timer hits zero. Ryan stealing ball control. A great pace check, but it bounces down and off the corner. Makes it a little sloppy in the center field with seven seconds left. Can Ryan it? put away the game-winning goal? Or, is you he going to do it? Oh, no, it's going to get stolen away by Mr. McGuffin. Probably going to smack it right into the ground. Keeps it alive in the garbage time, but it will bounce onto the ground. And that, folks, will be a victory for Jimmy McGuffin. And a 2-0 at that. Connor's webcam will be joining us in just a moment. Oh, it's that way bam oh bam bam there he is okay connor is now with us and that was a great series there connor i'm really excited to see kind of what finton can take from this one and bring it into the next against his future opponent which will be james or sam who are coming up next hold on let me do this one more time we've got nick we've got matt we've got not me we had you know maddie b we've got brayden we've got billy we've got charlie we've got anthony now we've got finton so it is up to James and Sam to decide who is that eighth and final person. There it is. There's the game, everybody. And now 10 seconds off the clock, Sam versus James. James is going to be in the blue. Sam is going to be in the orange. And James, oh no. Oh, even better. Almost set Sam up for a huge goal. But James comes through quick, jukes them out. And Sam would have scored on themselves. But James got in the way and will, no, possibly find the goal. It is done. James putting that first point down up 1-0. James is a storied competitor in GLCL history. One of the, one of the, uh, the longest running. Absolutely. Absolutely. A founding member, you might say, alongside uh, myself and, and yourself. Yeah, very true. We've got, we've got a couple founding members, you know, and we've only, only one of them left in the tournament right now, but, you know, we're, we're still proud. <laughs> Wait, is that true? Never mind. I'll figure that out later. Anyway, there's Sam tying things up. Codsworth coming in with that 1-1 scoreline on the board. James found a goal early on, Connor, but was that kind of all they had lined up in the boosters there? Well, I'll tell you right now, I definitely think that James caught uh, Sam a little off guard. Definitely. With that. Um, but Sam is a very experienced player. I think that Sam is going to be surprised by James's output. I think it's going to be anyone's game, however. I couldn't agree more. And I think that definitely kind of goes to show early on, we're seeing a 1-1 scoreline. That's something we didn't see last series at all. You know, we, we haven't seen that quite a few times, or we haven't seen that rather from the GLCL Carball series yet. So I want to see this coming through. Codsworth tries to get it in and off the corner, but unfortunately just too little, too late, scores on himself. And that puts James up two to one. Comfy lead there with uh, four minutes left on the clock. Thank you for the follow. It scared me. I forgot I had the audio on for the follow, and it scared me really badly. Now, <laughs> what, uh, what, James, what James lacks in experience, they more than make up for with shock and awe. Oh! A dead ball. Speaking of shock and awe, I mean, just coming through quickly. Now that everybody's aware, I've got it in my ears. Um, the, uh, the follow thing, people are going to keep following. You basically reset my heart rate every time you do that, so thank you so much. We are now tied up Same. two to Scoring. two. Connor, every time James puts something down, Sam answers almost immediately. We've got to wonder, is Sam toying with James a little bit? Look, it's uh, it's neck and neck. The, the pace of this match is quite possibly the most energetic and frenetic we've seen so far in this series. I said it at the start of the evening. I said, I think this is the series we're going to have a lot of fun with. We're going to have a great time coming through with this game. And I think we're already seeing that worth its weight in gold. We're tied up two to two. Dogen two going in and off the wall here, trying to find some ball control, getting a little bit lost in the sauce. Codsworth, a great setup onto goal. And oh my goodness, probably the cleanest goal we've seen all day. Sam going up in lead for the first time here 332 on the clock Sam up three to two 
Sam's got a lot of finesse. He's got a lot of finesse, and and it looks like they're spamming the um, the quick chat in the game. So <laughs> it's safe to say these two, there's not a lot of love lost between these. Two. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, they've competed against one another quite a few times, and they're gonna bring that quick chat out to discuss a little bit what's going on, what's being thrown at him right now. Joking too, a little bit of ball controls. James takes it up and around the left side of center field. Might be able to find a goal, but I can only guess. Just like that, Sam is waiting in the wings, hiding in the shadows to strike back with ball control and try to find a goal of his own. It's going to be a bit sloppy, though. A lot of slow-moving ball play here. Yeah, I think that when Sam was entering this match, uh, he may have been a little overconfident, maybe underestimating James. Uh, you know, James... Ooh. It's going to get tight here. Absolutely. That was a very close goal. Probably the second one we've seen from Sam. Oh, no! Sam, you got to be quick! Sam is Thanks able to get in and get that ball out of there. It almost rolls he right recovers. into goal. The recovery, it's a rough one, but it's a doable one. Now tries to get a goal on James and from the heavens. Is he going to do it? Coast to coast, Just not able barely to find misses. It. As I was saying, uh, you know, James is one of the most legendary competitors in GLCL history, but as of late, they've been getting a lot of flack for perhaps being washed up uh, a fraction of the competitor that they used to be. And I think Sam going into this match was expecting this to be uh, maybe more of a Sunday drive. Right. Absolutely expected a bit of a leisurely stroll instead of the sprint. This is very much turned into 2.12 on the clock. Sam up by only a single point right now. So James has more than enough time. Okay, gets a little bit harder as Sam puts that fourth point down. But the idea is that James still is in this series. This isn't quite the 14-0 game one we saw last series. This is instead a little bit more action, a little bit more momentum, more momentum, excuse me, coming through. 2.07 on the clock. James has to score one time per minute here to tie things up. I, I gotta say, I, I still think it's anyone's game here. I think that James has been very aggressive. I think that um, all the energy that um, Sam's been putting out, I think James oh. has been matching it. You know, it, it's so funny because right back in the beginning of the series, I asked, is Sam kind of toying with James here? Is this a bit of a slow play situation to kind of give them a false sense of security? But in reality, I think James, like you said, really coming out of the woodwork here, giving us an expectation that personally I did not expect because 10 minutes before we started, James was like, oh, I'm definitely going to lose. I'm playing horribly. Then comes in and does this. I mean, this is really a great showing. It's three to four. Is Sam again off the post? Just cannot get in past those corners. Even what with a open save goal. that was. Just luck against them over and over. I mean, that's got to be, if, if these all, if all these goals went in for Sam right now, we'd be looking at like a nine to three, but luck is simply on James's side. So we're still a one point differential, 90 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, you know, we talk about showmanship. I think that Sam uh, himself is also a bit of a showman. He likes to show off a little bit, um, but that could also uh, end up, you know, really costing him. Undoubtedly. I mean, there's a very real chance that this ends up costing him one way or another, but this is only game one, right? This is a best of three, so that if Sam wins game one, there may only be a game two. But if James can take what they learn here in game one, utilize it back in game two. Oh, a very unfortunate touch there. Knocks it straight forward. It falls off to the left side, and now you have to re-struggle for ball control. Codsworth goes in quick off the corner, but James is there to disrupt. What a setup. If there was a teammate in the game, they would have sunk it, but that's what the 1v1s are all about. Every play you make, you're the only one that can follow up on it. And that's what makes it so tough. That's what makes it so tight, so neck and neck. It's just one of those situations where, like you said, even the smallest error can be the greatest disaster. You Absolutely. make a fraction of a mistake and there's no one there to correct your error. It puts ball control right in your enemy's clutches or right in their wheels and they get to dunk on it just like that. Sam now up six to three, 60 seconds left. One goal per 20 seconds here from James if they want to walk away with a draw and force an overtime. Then they're able to win out the series, but it's, it's a tall ask here, Connor. Absolutely, absolutely. It's been aggressive, it's been energetic. I gotta tell you folks, this has been an entertaining match to watch. Without a doubt. This has been one of our closer series so far. And as I say that, it gets a little a little more drastic, a little harder to keep up with, but it, it's a great widens. performance. Yeah, the gap definitely widens here, but I've got to say, James puts three points on the board. That's the most we've seen from a losing party so far. I'd love to see game two come out a little bit different. Another early goal for James, like we saw, could be a great pace setter in the beginning of game two. And we see uh, silly Jimmy McGuffin uh, kind of coaching Sam a little bit in the chat here. Prove you're a lollygagger. 
Um, the Lollygaggers, uh, as a team, have been practicing a lot and have played a lot, are very experienced, quite possibly the most experienced Rocket League players in the GLCL. Uh, so Sam is proudly repping the Lollygaggers in this match. Absolutely. Finton, also a member, like you mentioned, of the Lollygaggers. So we're seeing quite a few of them in their performances here tonight. Oh, that's got to be in. James, nowhere in sight. Sam sinks an eighth goal. 13 seconds left on the clock. Things definitely looking rough here for James in game one, but that's the beauty of it. It's only game one. You've still got at least one more game to turn things around. Now, we speak a little bit about the um, Lollygaggers. Right. Um, I believe that I can confirm that the Lollygaggers will be competing uh, on November 26th at the uh, finals um, for a shot at the GLCL Tag Team titles. Now, Connor, so it's only going to be two members. Is that the entire Lollygaggers, or are there more than two? So, as Sam takes this game, allow me to elaborate a little bit. Yes, please. Um, so, the Lollygaggers will be represented by Sam, Braden, and Fenton. And they will face Anthony, Nick, and Matty B. So it's a, a full three v three. It'll be a three v three number one contendership match to face the tag team champions, yourself and James. Oh, hopefully not in Rocket League, though. You know, you know. What I'm oh, saying? it will be Rocket League. Oh, that's I can't. I can't play this game. Uh, well, you know, uh, the the good thing is that you got some time to practice. Folks, that's that's the for those that don't know, and I feel like most of you do. Um, I I so we set up this whole stream thing because I'm that bad at Rocket League. We definitely kind of did this. So I, I got a bomb dropped on me here, right in the middle of right in the middle of the stream. That I've really got to learn how to play this game. Luckily enough, I've got I've got quite a few friends that play it. So hopefully we can figure that out. And Connor, back in game one, what did I say? Another early goal for James could be the pace setter that they need to walk away victorious. So this is that first goal we found. But last time we saw it. Sam immediately answered with a goal of his own. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it seems like every time that uh, Sam, every time that James pulls out a trick, Sam has another thing to match it. Speaking of matching things, that's a great setup for Sam. Very easy follow through James. Nowhere inside. How does the ball go off to the left there? I'm, and they both whiff it. Amazing. I'm telling you, James has some kind of luck boost today. This has been some incredible luck to block out several goals just like that, Connor. Oh, my goodness. I mean, wow. come on. Two in a row. Completely thrown out the window there by Sam. Just luck on the side of James time and time and time again. Oh, All come on, that's open. League. There it is. I mean, that's just there an open goes. goal to come through. And he sinks it. No, nobody wants an open goal, but as a wise man once said, we absolutely take those. We take every single goal we can get in a game like Rocket League, and it is what a beautiful setup there. One minute off the clock so far. It's a 1-1 series. So this is easily the lowest scoring series we've seen so far today. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, a bit of a slow burn there. Almost a goal for James. I think they went for a boost instead of the goal, and that's going to bite you in the butt. That's just how things like this work, right? GLCL is all about making those small changes, making those small swaps in gameplay to walk away victorious, and I think we're just not seeing what we need to here from this team so far, from this player so far, in the form of James. A little bit scatterbrained, I think. Going for boost, then the goal, then the goal, then the defense, then the boost. I think you've just got to stick to one thing and try to run with it like Sam is doing. And Sam, starting to run with it just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, it's important to note, um, you know, this, this low score, it's not for a lack of trying, you know? This is a very methodical oh, absolutely. match. Despite its pace, it's a very methodical match. Both competitors are putting a lot of thought into every play that they make. No, I, I think it's a low scoring game due to the amount of effort that we're seeing. Both these players 100%. really giving it 110% out on the field right now. And nobody's getting those kind of same free goals that Finton was getting back in series one. This is a neck and neck back and forth series. James goes for a great setup, unfortunately follows through on a ghost ball as Sam takes momentum back and tries to go towards James's goal. But that's the hardest part of a 1v1. And that's why 1v1s are so weird in Rocket League is because if you've got to hit it basically perfect, you've got to coast to coast land the shot every single time. Because if, if you miss the opposing goal, the ball's just out in a dead man's land. 100%, as we have seen throughout this entire first round. Now, I believe we, we will be seeing even more competitive matches in the next few weeks. Right. But what I will say, 
is for a first round matchup, this has been very competitive. Without a doubt, arguably the most competitive we've seen a first round matchup. Now, I wasn't there for Jenna's matchup. I know that went to a game three, so maybe that one was pretty competitive as well. I was actually at a wedding that day, but um, this is definitely the most competitive I have seen. Yes, I would argue that uh, my face-off against my fraudulent brother was also very competitive. See, but if that, that one was fraudulent, so yes. is it, you know, is it as competitive? Yeah, I, I, I you know, I, what I got to say is uh, I wish it could have been a legitimate win. I really do. I really wish that he could have beat me fair and square, but unfortunately, he didn't have the confidence within himself to play fair and square, and he had to cheat. But that's okay. That's okay. Because okay, cause now you right get to hang out here with me. Now, now you get to hang out on the mic with me. Oh, someone's asking how competitive was the wedding, man. Oh, very. Oh, my goodness. I, I mean, the skill rankings there win? were incredible. I, I unfortunately did not win. I did not get married, but I, I had a great time. I was just happy to be there. It was my friend Chris. He got married. My friend Lindsay. I'm actually friends with both of them. They got married. The score was like 2-0. and oh. They both got married. It was kind of crazy. Oh, that's I mean, really good. It was a good wedding. Yeah, you know, I, I had a good time. I drove like seven hours in one day, but it was worth it. Oh, looks like Sam's just going to... Speaking of worth it. Right <laughs> You know, I always say there's the, the biggest false sense of security you can have in a game like Rocket League is a two goal lead because all of a sudden they score one time. You've got you don't even have a lead anymore because if they score again, things are tied. But if you've got a three point lead, that's where you can feel a little bit more comfortable because with only two minutes left, we're going to need a pretty aggressive play from James here. One goal per 40 seconds. And that's just to tie things up, Connor. Is it possible? Absolutely. Is it probable? That's still up in the air. But as James Remains goes safety. to sink this. 100 seconds left, one goal per 50 seconds. This and is it. it could happen. It's possible. It it's so happen. possible. This is the war. This could be. There's millions of timelines on how this series comes to a close. But one of them is James winning this series 5-4 to four in an overtime. 100 seconds left on the clock. One goal per 50 seconds. Let's see if James can clutch this one out. A great catch on that center field here. It's going to be knocked off into a dead man's land. Codsworth, the one to pick it up. Down away from their own goal. Another aggressive clear, but a risky one as he still hasn't gotten it out of his own back third. He comes in quick. James might knock it the wrong way, but instead Sam is going to be the one to catch it. Hurtling toward the goal of James. Takes James out of the equation. That's a three-second respawn time and an open goal. Sam, we talked about showmanship. That's the showiest play I've seen all day. Now, that was flashy. That was flashy. Just, I mean, disgusting in the best way. A phenomenal play from Sam there. That's a 5-2 lead. 79 seconds left. Now, it's amazing how, how skilled players can make it look so easy. Yeah, that's so true. And that's something you'll see at any rank, especially in a game like Rocket League. You watch and you're like, oh, yeah, I can do that. And then you try to pick up a controller. This is tough. This is some hard biz. I yeah, mean, it truly is difficult. This. I can't. That's why I'm on the desk. I can't play this game. This game is so hard. I, I like to think I'm pretty good at a lot of games, right? But this one, arguably one of my worst. This is a very tough game for me. It's a good thing that you're defending your tag team championship. That was not my choice. And I think we both know that. <laughs> I would not have picked this game. And, you know, that's uh, that's kind of how the GLCL works. You know, you can be great at every you can be great at nine out of ten games. And that tenth game is going to be the one that you got to defend your title. To be fair, though, James and I are what, triple, triple successful defenders or is it double? Uh, I believe you defended it once. Oh, I thought it was. T wow. I don't know what I don't know what world I'm living in, but it's clearly a much cooler one for me. Um, I don't think. Yeah. Twenty three seconds left. Ooh, things are looking rough. <sighs> yep. It's looking it's looking like uh, Codsworth is going to widen the gap. But, uh, you know, in your defense, uh, in, in this post-college era that the GLCL is in, it's kind of hard for us to regularly be defending these belts. Very true. Very true. But on the bright side, it's looking like you're, you and James might hold the belts for 365 days. Hey! A GLCL first. I feel like I just had... Never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, 15 seconds left on the clock. Things are looking mighty good here for Sam. We need one goal basically per second right now from James to clutch things out. So, folks, I think that's going to bring this series to a close. I think that I think. Oh, that's unless. No, it's impossible. Best case scenario, James scores a one more and that's still a six four. Even with a Finton one touch, it won't be enough for James. But hey, they won't go down without a fight. The Finton one touch could have clutched back, you know, a minute ago, two minutes ago, but with three seconds left on the clock, you go out with a bang instead of a whimper, and that's something to be proud of. That would have been nuts if James put one more down, but Sam is going to walk away the winner, folks. I mean, what a great series.
be just a banger series, folks. So please, it's going to be amazing. If you want to stick around, drop a follow on the channel because we're going to be going live on this channel from now on, unless you see otherwise, simply, you know, if something goes wrong, we'll be on my channel instead. But follow this. You can follow the GLCL official Twitter, which is listed at the bottom, which is over there. There's an Instagram as well. My Twitter and Instagram are also down there. If anyone wants to follow me, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, it's Connor. Thank you so much for joining me. This has been a phenomenal time. I hope everybody likes to do overlays. I made these myself. And after watching today's broadcast, uh, some things definitely need change, but we'll get that figured out. We'll come at you next week with some, some edits on the overlays. Okay, that's enough out of me, Connor. Thank you so much. Thank you to all our players today. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And thank you to all of our sponsors that don't exist yet. Please sponsor us. Check your posture. Drink some water. Don't forget to love each other. And we'll see you guys next time. Enjoy the rest of your night.